Welcome to another edition of Trinock TV. Today we got Adam from Pomatic in the office. Adam, thank you for coming in. No problem. We're going to talk about um, the wrapper today and how what's the best practice and how what's actually in the wrapper. So, Adam, before we do that, talk a bit about your role and a bit about Pomatic's offering. Yeah, sure thing. So, uh, Pomatic ourselves um, were one of the groundbreakers in header bidding um, when header bidding emerged about four years ago, and subsequently um, had, we offered a proprietary wrapper uh, about two years ago. Um, that was our own technology. Yeah. Uh, as the the industry has moved on and as wrapper adoption has has increased, um, we've seen that going down the open source route yeah. is is potentially what what the future looks like for uh, for the wrapper ecosystem. Ourselves, Rubicon, and Nexus are involved in prebit.org, yeah. the the open source uh, solution where our engineers as well as other companies are going to be pulling in the same direction. Yeah. Um, for the future of open source wrapper and wrapper technology itself. So let's let's talk about the wrapper first and foremost. First and foremost, right? So obviously we had the advent of header bidding, right? Which is basically trying to beat DFP at its own game and AdX at its own game, right? It's like basically just kind of evening the the playing field. What exactly is a wrapper, right? Let's talk about the wrapper itself because we want to talk about what the best practice is. But like for a publisher, what is a wrapper and how does it work? Sure thing. So I mean, the wrapper itself emerged when. Um, as you say, you want to get that first look of an impression, so you want to put a header tag on the page. And putting a header tag on the page, you're going to be putting one per SSP. So from a publisher's point of view, if you're working with four or five SSPs, you'd be putting four or five different tags on the page. So yeah. just, just to give Let's you talk about example. what should be in the wrapper then. So to give you a quick example, so this is, this is our web page. So here's your header, here's your body, and here's your footer on the page. This is your this is your code your HTML basically. This, this, right? this is the code in your yeah. page. Now, if you wanted to um, supersede DFP or compete with DFP and start going and getting your yeah. toes into header bidding, you might be putting say a header code for SSP one here, a header code for SSP two here, and a header code for SSP three here. So these are three different header tags you're putting on the page. Yeah. So the way uh, wrappers emerged was when you had these multiple codes in the page, you were managing all of these separately. So yeah. You have your first SSP on, you're going into that UI, you're defining what inventory should be monetized with this SSP. Yeah. Then you're going into a different UI for SSP2. Yeah. You're going to a different UI for SSP3. And basically what it is, is it's quite hard to manage. Also, one of the things that we found is all of these SSPs can be working to different frameworks. Right. So SSP1 may be trying to <coughs> respond within 500 milliseconds. SSP2 might be doing it within 800 milliseconds. And SSP3 might be doing 700 milliseconds. The, the problem that you have there is you've got three different headers on the page right. who are working to a different framework of how the auction should take place. So should all of them come back in 500 milliseconds? Should it come back in seven or eight? What should it be? So effectively, you could be missing out money there by not managing that properly. If, if, you, if you mismanage that, then it's basically, it's like a new waterfall again. Right, so right. The, the wrapper itself coming into play is a container tag that wraps all of these SSPs up into just one code in the page. Right. So the wrapper itself, is a container tag basically containing all those. Uh, I'm going to put a W here for right. Wrapper. So basically, it's going to be what, what you should be looking for from a publisher's point of view is one single UI where you can manage the SSPs who are taking part inside there, how long the, the dynamics of that auction, how long it should take place. So every SSP should be working to 800, 1000 milliseconds, whatever it might be. Right. Every SSP is focused on the same bits of inventory. Uh, and basically, it's one UI to manage it rather than um, fragmented multiple UIs. So basically, you've got one one way to manage all of that demand in in a, in one tag. In, in one tag. So basically, so, so let's talk about the because obviously uh, there's been a lot of discussion around how many headers you should put in a wrapper, and given the fact it's all client side initially, and yeah. obviously moving the server side, but the amount of tags on the page could slow down the page load and all the rest of it, latency, etc. So let's talk about best practice. How would a publisher set up a typical wrapper, and who? Like, let's talk about what should be in there. What What would you say is the best practice for publishers? Sure. So, the natural assumption here is every single publisher is different. Every publisher has different needs and different wants of how a wrapper should behave. Um, so, when we talk about um, client side header bidding, that's where every SSP or every demand source in your wrapper is sending their bids back to the page yeah. to be then sent to the ad server. 
um, as they're sending more information back to the page, that's that's more packets of information to be loaded. So you want to limit the amount of information mm. being sent back to the page. So it doesn't really matter so much if you're on a desktop device, but let's say, for example, you're on a mobile yeah. device, you might be on the tube, you might yeah. have poor connection, and you've got maybe an additional 10, 15 megabytes coming back to loading the page, that's going to slow down the page, that's going to ruin your user experience and drive users away. So from a client side point of view, what we found the sweet spot is is four or five Four or five. Four or five SSPs. And is that both wrapper. desktop and mobile? Yeah. Desktop and mobile. For both four or five SSPs is what we found is the sweet spot in there. Yeah. But, you know, obviously recently, um, server-side header bidding has become um, a, an additional tool that publishers So what's, let's explain, explain to people what the difference between server-side and client-side uh, wrappers are. Sure. So it all depends on where the responses go to. Right. So just to give you a quick illustration of this. So this is going to be our web page here. Yeah. And the code's on the page. This over here is our ad server. This is where DFP sits, yeah. this is our ad server. So let's say inside our wrapper we have um, four different SSPs. Yeah. So our wrapper will initialize. We're going to call four different SSPs. We bring the demand back to the web page. Then we're going to call SSP1, we're going to call SSP2, 3, and 4. Yeah. These SSPs will then call the DSP relationships that they have. Yeah. They're going to send their auction to DSPs and send their bid prices back to the wrapper. Yeah. So the wrapper will then, we can do one of two things. One, it will pick the winning price and send it to the ad server. Or two, it can send all prices to the ad server and let the ad server play logic there. Right. So there's one or two options you can use. So is that basically being filled back into the waterfall system within the ad server itself? Or how does that work? Like so. This, I mean, is, this is this is before we even, this is superseding the waterfall. Right, before right. we even get to the waterfall, we've got let's say our winning price here is let's say it's two pounds. Yeah. What we're gonna do is we're gonna send this to the ad server and what what's gonna happen on the ad server side of things is um, AdX, for example, will have its own auction and if AdX auction comes back at say one pound twenty and ours comes back at two pounds then the whoever whichever SSP won will win the impression. But this is th so this is client side, is it? This is a client side. So what happens when this all goes server side? Is this basically just all of this put into the ad server effectively? Oh, everything takes place to the ad server side. So oh. essentially, we're taking we're taking one hop away from this. Right. So what we're going to do is instead of the responses going back to the page to then be sent to the ad server, we're sending them from the SSPs direct to the ad it, server. Right. Okay. So, but I guess what this has done is this has brought some complexity into the marketplace. So we've seen, we're seeing publishers today with one client-side setup and one server-side setup. Right. They're doing the client-side auction, they're doing their server-side auction. So what we're why, seeing- why would, why would you bother doing both? It makes no sense whatsoever. It does, because the thing is, um, client-side, so the, the waterfall was always client-side, was always on the page, yeah. it was always set up via the page. Yeah. And when header bidding emerged, it was always client-side which means that the amount of adapters or SSPs you can work with within your wrapper on the client side, there's somewhere in the region of 100 different adapters you can use. Right. When we talk about... Um, what do you mean by so adapter? But adapter would be, let's say, for example, if you have Prebid. Right. So Podmatic will have an adapter built for Prebid. Okay. So that would be Prebid being the wrapper, right. Podmatic being an adapter within their server. Right, right, right. Or essentially an SSP that's taking part okay, in okay. the wrapper. Right. So from the client side, we've got about 100 different adapters that can be used. So and we're talking about the likes of Critio and... We're talking about, we're talking about every, and every, yeah. every, every major player. Yeah. Um, not Amazon, though, because um, on with some SSPs, they're only working on the server side. Right. They, they either didn't want to or didn't see the benefit of getting involved in client side. Right. So they're only working on the server side. Okay. So from today, what we're seeing is mainly the major players, we've got somewhere in the region of seven to nine, depending on your definition, of pure server-side players. Right. Um, so the one thing that we see as problematic is, is should you choose between 100 or should you choose between seven to nine? So as we mentioned earlier, you know, there can be latency concerns when yeah, yeah. adding more and more SSPs over here. But so so it, if you went server-side, it would reduce the latency issues. That was one of the big benefits right. of moving server-side. Right. Okay. One of the big benefits of moving server-side is to reduce that latency. Right. So because there's no more calls going back to the page to then be sent to the ad server, it's only taking out one hop, but it's also sending the additional packet of information direct to the ad server. So, so the, basically the ad server logic would mediate the, the auction. So let's just say that you have the impression here, right? Calls out to all the SSPs, they send their price back to the, to the ad server. The ad server then sends who gets that because you may have uh, direct sold and all the rest of it. So effectively, they, they buy that impression. We say we think it's worth this amount of money and then it goes into waterfall. And, and, and client side is you send out the um, the call to these, these SSPs, they bring it to the wrap, and the wrapper goes into the ad server or the ad server to mediate the process. Is that is that correct? Yeah, well, the ad server knows the priorities. Right. It knows it knows what should be what should be trafficked first, what should be delivered first. After that you get down to priority 13, 14, 
typically is your so surely this priority. is the most logical way to go if you want to like particularly mobile server side seems the most logical way to go from, oh, an, app, from an in-app perspective service like certainly yeah but um i mean from from a pragmatic point of view what we want to do is we want to alleviate that need to have two or more different deployments right so um what we're what we're talking about today is something that's kind of considered a hybrid header bidding right a hybrid wrapper solution so let's say for example high wrapper could be yeah <laughs> you know that could be the name so let's say for example you want to work with four different ssps yeah uh, but let's say for example ssp3 and ssp4 only have a server side offering right ssp1 and 2 only have a client side offering. right you don't want to have one deployment on you know one two two different wrappers one for server side one for client side what you want is you'd want to ideally have just one deployment it's managed via one single ui rather than two that's the ideal scenario so from a pragmatic point of view we can do this via one tag so the wrapper will call ssp1 and ssp2 here are going to have a client side auction so they're going to call their DSPs, right. get their bid prices, send it back to the page. Whereas SSP3 and SSP4 are going to do a server side auction. They're going to auction to their DSPs, okay. but they're going to send their price direct to the page. So now we've got two calls that would eventually end up with the page. Let's say, for example, our client side price is going to be three pounds, and our server side price is going to be three pounds fifty. Server side should win in this case. So basically, what it means is instead of having two separate deployments that's harder to manage, you've just got the one. Right, it just seems very complex that, uh, <coughs> to have both. So, is it not better to kind of have everybody go on server side, or do you think that it will, if, like, is it case of it will be a hybrid model as opposed to one, one, one? I mean, the the server side, the server side part of the ecosystem today is, I would say, still in its infancy. So, as you can see on on the client side, we've got over a hundred different um, SSPs, networks, demand partners who are who are building adapters and modifying adapters to right. work on client side, whereas you've only got a small amount working on the server side, which means that, so I mean, if you go back to the basic principle of header bidding and the wrapper itself, you want to have two things. You want to have choice. You want to have multiple SSPs participating in the auction itself. The more SSPs you have, the more competition you have, the higher that competition for the publisher, the higher the eCPM should be. So if you've got five SSPs or five demand partners fighting for that impression, the eCPM should be going up. So when you when you move to say a server side and server side only model, you are kind of limited in which partners you have. So when you talk about client side and server side together, there's no there's no kind of choice um, conflict there. You can have the client side partners you want and the server side partners you want. But I guess what this kind of comes back to is when you're considering which wrapper to have or which wrapper should be should be for you. Um, the ease of managing a wrapper is certainly something that, that should be talked about. So when you go back to the old waterfall model, so let's say for example, I've got five different demand partners. Yep. On a daily basis, or maybe every 48 hours, I would change the order of my waterfall depending on who was performing better in the last day or the last 48 hours. Right. So if SSP1 or demand partner one um, generate 90% of my revenue, they will get first chance. They'll get first chance in the waterfall. So going back to the old waterfall model, let's say we're going to call, I'm going to say D1 is my first demand partner, and we're going to call D2, D3. So in this case, let's say my floor price is two pounds. I'm going to call demand partner one. If they only offer me one pound 50, they're not at my floor price. So I'm going to give demand partner two a chance to beat this. So they're going to offer me 175. Again, there's another pass back. We're going to eventually keep going down the waterfall here. So what we saw in the waterfall was there was constant optimization. If demand partner three was, was offering me high ECPMs and generating me good revenue, I'd move them up to position one for yeah. the next day, give them the first bite of the cherry. What we're seeing from a wrapper and a header point of view is there's very little optimization done. So if you were to maybe spend three or four months doing an RFI process to pick a, a decent uh, vendor for your wrapper, once you pick that vendor out, you say, okay, I've got five partners I want to work with on the, on the client side and I'm not going to optimize those. Those five clients will be in there. Um, those five adapters will be in there, maybe for six months, maybe for a year, until I can get my dev team to come out and make some changes for right. me. So what we want to make sure is that if you've got five partners in your wrapper, and if, if one of them is not performing, now performance is, is a bit of a broad question. So the silver bullet in performance is revenue. Are they generating me revenue? Are they are they generate are they contributing to my bottom line? Right. But there's a couple of things that you can look at outside of revenue. And one of those things is their bid activity. So let's say for example I have a wrapper on my page and I have one million impressions available, say going through my wrapper every single day. If I have one partner in my wrapper out of these five who's not bidding on them, say they're bidding on only twenty percent of my impressions, 
that means that either their demand relationships aren't there or they simply just don't want my inventory. So are these are these wrap are these these adapters in the wrapper are they PMP related or is it all open market basically or how how does it work from a from a sort of a managing process? So the the adapters in the wrapper will be for open marketplace. Right. So literally, it's an open marketplace means the access um, client or uh, publisher inventory. Absolutely. So, but as well, going back to the the optimization piece, if if you had a waterfall here and you you constantly had someone at the bottom of the waterfall who was monetizing no inventory for you, or as we go back to the earlier container tag um, example. Let's say, for example, I want everyone to respond in 800 milliseconds. If I have a partner who's constantly coming back in 1,000 or 1,100 milliseconds, constantly timing out, they're not going to be adding anything, any strategic value in my wrapper. So when we had the old waterfall model where we we're constantly optimizing on a daily or 48 hour basis, what we found is because there's quite a complexity to actually picking a code off the page, removing one adapter, putting a different adapter yeah. in there, putting it on a test page, making sure it works, then putting it into a dev queue. That's something that you want to avoid with a wrapper solution. Yeah. So um, with the with the, the open wrap product that Pubmatic is offering, uh, what we have is one single piece of code. That code will go on the page, regardless of the amount of SSPs that are participating in there, regardless of the, the timeout, how long the auction should take, regardless of any other dynamics around the auction, that single piece of code doesn't change. So does it? Do uh, you offer the UI where you can put like adapters in there? Absolutely. So basically, you offer the publisher the option to go in. I want to add this adapter. I want to add that adapter. So they've got that complete control. Yeah. And your code sits on the page effectively. Yeah. The code will sit on the page. So the code's here on the page. On the UI itself, you can see in it's a graphical interface. So you don't need to be an expert with JavaScript yeah. to to be able to pick it apart. Well, you can basically drop tags in and out basically. Yeah. So if if I if I say to myself, okay, of my five. Uh, SSPs who are in my wrapper today. SSP two isn't really performing very well. I want to take them out and I want to try a different SSP in there. Right. Um, and basically, in the time it takes you to send an email to a dev person and say, "Hey, can you um, can you make this change? Can you take this out?" You can actually go and do this. You don't have to be a JavaScript expert. Right. You can go and pull one adapter out, put a different adapter in there. So the pretty bit just just curious is it's open source. So basically, everybody adds the GitHub and as it updates, it's kind of all like a Linux type of project. Is that correct? Yeah. So, so with uh, with Prebit and, and Prebit.org by extension, um, you've got the engineers from all the companies who are working within Prebit. Yeah. So I think Prebit today has the support for about eighty different adapters. Wow. So eighty different dem demand sources yeah. or SSPs networks can go in there, and all the engineers who work with those companies will be constantly updating their adapter code or making tweaks to make sure it's behaving correctly in there. So I think it's about every four weeks the Prebit code should update. Version thirty three was just released. Wow. Um, was just released two days ago. And then we can use it basically. Yeah, you can go on there. You can pick the code, um, and you can then once you've got the code, you can define who should be in the auction, how right. the auction should be have. Right. So what's the future here? Where do you think this is going to go? I mean, you know, we're we're sort of like, do you think everyone's going to go server side or will it stay client side? How how do you think we'll, uh, you know, what, what what's the future for Header? So, if I was a publisher, yeah, um, I wouldn't want to be dictated what choice I have based on whether I go for a client side or server side solution. I want to be able to cherry pick the different demand partners or SSPs I work with. I want to be able to pick all the ones I want and not be limited because I've chosen a server side or a hybrid solution or a, a client side solution. Yeah. So from from my side of things I think that a hybrid solution is going to be the future. I mean today we're seeing publishers who have a client side and a server side, two different solutions side by side with each other. Um, again that's something that's becoming a bit more difficult to manage. That's, that's two different UIs, it's very fragmented. Um, so what I see as um, a benefit for a publisher down the line is a hybrid solution. Right. So you can cherry pick the SSPs or adapters you want to work with on the client side and not be limited to just working client side. You can also work on the server side. Adam, thanks for that overview on the wrapper and the complexity of it. It looks like it's going to be a lot of uh, a lot of development in that space and, and I'm sure the adoption is going to be higher as well, pre-bid, and you guys working on it. So thanks for coming in. No problem. And we'll see you next time on Trader Talk TV. Thank you.